Hello and welcome to a brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This time we're going to be taking a look at how to create more complex masks for colour correcting your footage so that you can create really detailed uh, fine tuning to your images that doesn't rely on just the square and the circular masks that are built into the colour correction tool. Now by default if we were to add a colour correction which by the way, you don't actually have to go into the effects browser to find. So color corrections, just FYI, live in the effects browser now. They're not on your uh, inspector by default. And if you go to color, you can drag color correction onto your footage. And then if we click this button here to show the inspector, you can see there's now a color correction effect. But what you can actually do is just press Command 6. That's going to bring up the color board. And once you start making changes, it's going to automatically add a color correction to your footage. You can see there's now a color correction there. But if we wanted to mask this and isolate a specific area, we can click this button here and add a shape mask. But this is what I was talking about in terms of adding squares or circles. This is literally the amount of detail you can add uh, to your image when you want to color correct specific areas. It's not very much control and it's not really what we're going for. What we're going to use is a tool called the draw mask effect and that is going to allow us to isolate way more complicated areas for our color correction. So in this shot here, we've got a glove coming in and pressing a button, and I basically want to draw a mask around the glove so I can brighten up the glove, darken the background, and really create some depth in the shot. So the way we're going to do that, first of all, is we're going to duplicate our footage. And you want to create as many instances of your footage as there are going to be color correction tweaks to specific areas. In this case, it's just the glove. So to duplicate footage, we can hold down the option key and we can drag the footage above. And now you can see we've got two copies of our footage. The next thing we want to do is add the draw mask tool. Now, if you ever don't know where an effect is, just click on all in the effects browser. And then you can see you've got a little search bar down here and we can type in draw and that's going to show us the draw mask tool. We drag that onto our footage. And now when we hover over the viewer, you can see we've actually got a pen tool. And this is going to be really familiar to anyone who's used Adobe After Effects or Adobe Photoshop or any other image editing applications. We can now draw around the glove and you can actually click and drag to create bezier curves just like in those other applications. And we can create a much more complicated mask around the image. Now you can see we've actually got to the edge of the frame and we need to select outside the frame. So what we want to do is click on this percentage uh, viewer here and change this to 12.5% and now we can drag or click rather outside of the image just like that and now we can go back to fit and when we clicked on the original point we closed up the mask and we've now got a complete object. If we were to disable the clip below by pressing the V key you can see that we've now got one version of the footage which is just the glove and then we've got another version of the footage below, which is just the original footage filling in the rest. Now, the glove does move, so how do we go about animating the mask? It's really straightforward. What you want to do is, with the clip selected, add a keyframe here, and then we can start moving the points. Now, the reason I drew the mask around the midway point rather than at the start is because the glove actually exits frame. So, with a keyframe added midway through, we can now go to the main points where the glove hits, so that's here. And we can select all these points by just clicking and dragging. Oh, I missed most of them. And we can move them all just like that. And hold down shift and we can select multiple points as well. And then for when it exits frame, we're going to move all the points over like this. So now the mask is going to follow the glove in, sort of. Now bear in mind, I'm just going to do a really thoroughly average job in order to convey the technique, you can spend as much time as you want tracing around your specific areas in order to get the best results. There we go. That'll do for this the function of this uh, tutorial. It's a pretty average job, but the technique is still there. Now you can see if we disable the bottom clip, we've got a mask that sort of follows the glove. Now, if you want to see your keyframes, then what you can do is you can right click on your footage and you can press show video animation. And this is going to show us the key points where we've keyframed the mask. And we can actually move them as well if we accidentally missed the point where the glove hits that by just dragging this keyframe 
to the left or right in the timeline. And in between those keyframes, you'll notice that it does animate the uh, keyframes, so it's getting the uh, all the points in positions that they need to be to hit the next keyframe. Now, if we were to add a color correction by pressing Command-6, and let's just make it green so we can see what we're doing. The edges are really sharp and hard, so we can add some feathering. So in the Draw Mask tool, you can see we've got a feather slider here. We can slide that along, and you can see that's really going to soften up the edges. Now, you can adjust the fall off, which is basically the gradient with which the feathering um, ends. But I would leave it at zero, because zero for most reasons is really good. But if you've got something that... Uh, it's soft to begin with, but suddenly has a harder edge, then fall off will help you adjust that, but most times you won't need it. You can invert the mask in order to isolate an area that you don't want to select. However, in this instance, that's not an issue because the background is a different piece of footage. So anything we want to adjust that isn't the glove, we've got control over that with the footage below. So let's just hide the video animation for the sake of keeping our timeline nice and clean. And now we can actually make some color corrections that we want to make. So our global uh, color corrections have been made green. We're going to reset that by clicking in this number field here, pressing zero, and our footage is back to normal. What we want to do is brighten up the glove. So we're going to go to the exposures tab, and we're going to brighten up the image, brighten up the mid-tones, and then we're going to darken some of the shadows as well, just so that the glove does have some kind of dynamic range to it. And then once we've done that, we can select the footage below and we can just darken it all by grabbing the global exposure, dropping that down, and we can even drop the saturation as well for this clip. And because we were looking in the color correction window and we started tweaking stuff, it automatically added a color correction effect in the inspector panel, which is really, really, really great. Now, if you ever want to make adjustments to the mask that you've created, just make sure you select the Draw Mask tool, and then you can see the points drop back up. But if you want to, say, adjust the feathering, but you don't want to see all these points around, then there's a button up here to toggle the view of the points. Now, it's not getting rid of anything, it's just hiding those red dots to show us where the mask is. So that way, we can really see what we're doing with the feathering and how relevant it is. And then the other thing we could do is actually the fill opacity. So this is actually going to control the strength of the adjustment we're making by dropping the opacity of the whole layer. So it's essentially exactly the same as if we were to drop the opacity in the compositing window, but it gives us the control in the mask as well, a bit closer to where the rest of our effects are. So it's really useful still. But what if you then, now that you've created the distinction, you've made the effects for specific areas, you want to create or control the overall look of the shot. What you want to do is you want to turn these two clips into a compound clip. So select both clips, right click them and press new compound clip. Alternatively press option G. It's going to allow us to name the clip, so we're going to choose this glove CC shot for glove color correction shot. Press OK and then it's going to merge it into one piece of footage. And now if we press command 6 to open up the color board and we start tweaking stuff, say the overall tone of the shot, so we want to make it much cooler shot because it's something to do with space, you can see it's going to affect the whole image. So if we control the highlights as well, then we are affecting everything. So we still get control over the overall shot, but at the same time we have tweaked and manipulated specific areas that are far more complicated than you would be able to control using only the color correction tool inside of Final Cut Pro. But we've done this using only the plugins built into Final Cut. Now there are lots of great applications that allow you to isolate elements. SliceX is a really cool tool, but I just wanted to give you guys an option for those that don't want to uh, pay additional money for additional plugins. So hopefully this was useful and wasn't too complicated. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments area below, and I'll be back soon with some brand new tutorials in the near future, I promise you. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.